The four deadliest food additives that are literally killing your gut microbiome and contributing to so many negative health effects that you probably don't even notice. See, you assume that just because it's allowed in food that it's going to be safe and it's going to be okay. That is not necessarily the case. First of all, there's always a lag time between the science and what's get put in policy, it might be 10 or even 20 years. And the second aspect is big money and uh, powerful interests have a strong vested interest in keeping things the same. And unfortunately, our governments jump more towards what the, the, <laughs> what the uh, big industry does than the science. So let's begin with some basics. The first of these are the preservatives. So I put them together as a group, of course, and the preservatives include sodium, benzoate, sodium nitrate, and potassium sorbate. Now these are preservatives slash antimicrobial. So one of the first things you think, hold on, antimicrobial. My gut microbiome is actually made up of microorganisms. And these preservatives don't select, oh, I'm gonna get rid of the bad ones and I'm gonna keep the good ones. They wipe out everything. It's like taking small doses of antibiotics every single day with every single meal because these are in virtually all of your foods. Now, the first thing that they cause, and this is associated with all of the groups, is a decrease in the biodiversity of the microbiome. So the mix of it, which determines how healthy it is, and an increase in inflammation, which is the cornerstone of all chronic illness. So all of these additives contribute to that. But the first, once we get past those, we go, all of the studies now show that these preservatives also contribute to an increase in IBS, irritable bowel syndrome. Now, there have been dramatic increases in the rates of IBS around the world, and the highest concentrations or highest amounts of it are literally in the countries with the highest amount of processed foods, e.g. eating Western processed uh, American style meals and an increase in colitis. So the animal studies are showing increased IBS, an increase in colitis, and the human studies are showing it. So we know these preservatives are playing havoc with our gut. Now what we want to do is take a step back and say, how can we remove those? Lots of strategies out there that can. Then we've got the sneaky ones, and these are called emulsifiers. Now what emulsifiers do is they enable you to get fat and water and mix it together. And so that means if you've got any food that is produced that's got fat and water in it, which is just about all your food, which is all your foods, then it's going to have emulsifiers in it. And these emulsifiers, polysorbate 80, another one called carbomoxymethyl cellulose, and that's just called CMC, and another one, another one called carrageenan, and these three mix the water and the fat together and they're everything, literally everything. So first of all, we know they call a decrease in the microbiome biodiversity, an increase in inflammation. And the studies, you ready, show that they break down or they destroy the good mucus, um, uh, the, the good mucus producing bacteria in the gut. And your mucus is a fine line just above all the cells you've got in your, in your respiratory system, your your gut system, it's part of your immune system, and it's in a fine balance. And what they do is increase the elimination of it. So what they're doing is getting rid of that fine, thin line of mucus. As a result, you end up with a lot of gut-related problems. So the studies on mice show there's an increase in colitis in mice. Colitis, by the way, is inflammation of the colon. And this is called an inflammatory bowel disease much more serious than IBS that I've mentioned up here. Uh, but the studies also show really interestingly that uh, it, it leads to an increase in anxiety in male mice and an increase in antisocial behavior in female mice. Interesting, isn't it? So maybe a lot of those social, psychological issues that we're confronted with every day are caused by, now we know that everybody's heard of that, it's called the gut brain axis. So we've got these issues and what we also know, just the double test, science do what's called a fecal microbiome transplant. And they've taken the poo from the mice 
who have been fed these emulsifiers and they've said, okay, see what happens. They've taken the poo from them and they put them in the other mice who are healthy and the mice develop all of these signs and symptoms. And vice versa, if they put poo from a healthy mouse in there, I know it sounds a bit gross, doesn't it? But then it actually resolves it. So the message is we definitely know these emulsifiers are a major problem. Now, what's interesting with the emulsifiers is they are regarded as kind of totally safe. And it's only been in the last 12 years. I think the, the guy's researched in class and um, has, has been doing extensive research on it now. And everyone's following in suit and showing exactly the same. These emulsifiers are playing havoc. So again, get off the processed foods. You can't expect to have processed foods with these emulsifiers in and have a healthy gut. It just doesn't. It's not in line with each other. And the final one here, before I get to the the major, the single biggest contributing factor to gut problems from additives. But the second last one is maltodextrin. And maltodextrin causes a typical microbiome uh, reduction, inflammation. It causes a villi erosion. Now, all of your uh, gut linings have little finger-like projections to absorb all the nutrients and they destroy them. And these finger-like projections are to increase the surface area so you can get more nutrients absorbed in. And these are destroying them. And as a result of destroying them, you get less nutrients, you get sicker and so on. It also leads to an increase in pathogens. So these are specifically not just uh, disturbing the gut microbiome, but an increase in specific microorganisms that are toxic to us and toxic to our gut. And then finally, it leads to a particular condition in infants called necrotizing enterocolitis, um, which again, you can understand by the word necrotizing, which means destroying and, and so on. Um, it's pretty dangerous when it comes to infants. And if you just look at these ones and say, do we really need those? And the final one that we really need to be concerned about because it's added to everything now are the artificial sweetness. Ones like saccharin, sucralose, and splendor. And the first and most obvious thing is they lead to an increase in inflammation in the gut, around the body, and of course a decrease in the microbiome biodiversity, which we all know plays havoc with our long-term health, our immune system, and so on. But the interesting thing is we've sold these as a healthy alternative. So they've become a part of so many people's lives. The research on the research now shows that of the studies that have been done to show to be positive, three out of four of them come from the food industry. Whereas when they look at the independent studies and they found or reported on 23 good studies, only one of them reported a potential benefit. A couple of them reported none whatsoever and most of them by far now report that they've got negative, as negative consequences that they're trying to you know, tell you that are good. Let me give you an example. For example, glucose intolerance. It increases glucose intolerance. It increase, increases insulin resistance. And as a result, you've got an increase in weight gain, diabetes. Uh, these are the things that people are trying to avoid and reduce them. They're told by these semi-autonomous government bodies, go on these if you're a diabetic. If you want to lose weight, go on these. No, the exact opposite, get off these. They contribute more to these problems than actually does sugar. Now, I'm not saying go on sugar, but I'm just putting you a perspective here. And then there was a study recently completed where they gave mums, pregnant mums, some of the artificial sweeteners, and they found out that the infants were dramatically at increased risk of developing metabolic syndrome, increased weight, uh, increased uh, insulin resistance, and so on. The overwhelming evidence on all of this clearly shows that they're not performing like they're supposed to, and they're actually negative and dangerous. A more recent study where they got a group of about 40 adults, and they gave them uh, you know, kind of the daily doses of these, and they found that it increased the diarrhea rate by four times, and it increased the what's called the post uh pain. So the pain they get directly after um, eating by four times. And then another study, 
um, and there were lots of these studies, I'm just giving you a summary of some of them, showed that it decreased bile acids. Now, bile acids are essential for healthy fat digestion. They're essential for good digestion, good gut movement. They're essential, actually, if you watch all my other videos, which I would recommend you do, um, that they're, they're essential for all of the communication or part of the communication through the gut in the small intestine. And so it's important that they function properly. And we find that these artificial sweeteners decrease the levels of it. Now, over, overwhelmingly, the research is showing that these food additives aren't necessary. They're in all of the processed foods. You're getting more and more of them. Um, the countries or the areas and even the districts who have more of these have higher rates of the uh, levels of chronic illness and so on associated with it. So it's a lose-lose situation. My message is you've got to look after the gut. Now, please subscribe to the channel below. 